the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. Presenting America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And now let's see what's going on in the Nelson family. Ozzie? Yeah? David's in a hurry, dear. Could you make the toast? Oh, sure. Is there any school today? Oh, yes, there's school. What's the big rush, David? He's been appointed hall monitor. Oh, good for you. What does that consist of? I stand by the stairs and see that the other kids don't shove and push. Hmm. Jim, please. Well, that sounds like quite a responsibility. I don't think it's so hot. What's wrong with it? Well, for one thing, at recess and lunch, I don't have as much time to play ball as the other kids. Oh, I think you'll find in later life being a monitor is a little more valuable experience. Not if I'm a ball player. Well, it all comes under the heading of accepting responsibility. Can't shirk our duties, you know. Don't let the toast burn, Ozzy. More jam, please. Don't eat any more jam, Ricky, until you get your toast. <laughs> well, there's some things we have to do in life, whether we like them or not. Here at home, we all have certain tasks to perform. Somebody has to cook. Somebody has to keep the furnace going. Who's responsible for hanging up your clothes? I am. And who's responsible for putting away skates and sports equipment? I am, boy. Well, school is just an extension of your home life. Are you watching the toast, Ozzy? Mm-hmm. No, oh, golly, yes. Here you are, Ricky. See, when you have a job to do at school, get it done just as you would at home. Regardless of how big or how small. Uh, give me a piece of that toast, will you? Thank you. Whatever the job is, the important thing is to accept it gracefully and do it well. <laughs> See, David, you were made a monitor because you're an outstanding student. It's a reward for being conscientious. So be proud of the fact that only the best students get to be monitors. Were you ever a monitor, Pop? <laughs> well, schools were a little different in those days, Ricky. Ricky, don't uh, bother Daddy while he's buttering his toes. I got a job at school, too, boy. Ah, good for you, son. What do you do? Starts today. I'm supposed to stay after school and clean the erasers. Whoa, good for you, Ricky. How come the teacher selected you? She caught me talking during the spelling lesson. <laughs> well, nevertheless, it all comes under the heading of a civic responsibility. Job to be done and done well. You better get your books, boys. You'll be late for school. We'll talk about this later. Okay, Mom. Come on, Ricky. Okay. Well, those boys want to get out of something. They twist and turn like drunken eels. Hey, I better get going here. I have a million things to do. i name three. Do the, do the dishes, make the beds, and do the shopping. How can women build a few ordinary little chores into a million things today? Well, I also have a luncheon meeting with all the committee women for the annual PTA Bazaar. Oh, is that affair coming up again? Oh, I just remembered. I also have to get out a report for the Ways and Means Committee at the library. And then there's a meeting today of the Entertainment Committee at the church. Well, I think it's wonderful you've been appointed to all these committees. Appointed? I volunteered. I said I will so often, I'm beginning to feel like a little red hen. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm very proud of you, dear. It shows a real public spirit. You know, something we're getting to be quite a civic-minded family. Well, I just hope I haven't taken on more than I can handle. Oh, I'm sure you have. Wonderful spirit. Oh, I almost forgot. I have also become a special traffic policeman. Traffic policeman? Mm-hmm. You know that bad street crossing near the school? Yeah. Well, some of the mothers have volunteered to take turns watching it during school hours. Here, look at this. Oh, how about that? Armband and a whistle. Works and everything. Sounds like a real policeman. Here, let me try it. <laughs> Holy smokes. Uh, sorry, old man. Somebody blew the whistle by mistake. <laughs> There's one thing about you, old man. You never disappoint anybody. Well, what's on your mind? Nothing. I thought I'd find you lying on the couch, and I wasn't disappointed. Hello, Tony. Hey, you look a little unhappy. What's the trouble? You know, Harriet, women are wonderful. They, they look lovely. They're a comfort to have around. They even smell nice. What's your complaint? Why do they have to go running bizarre? Well, for charity. Fine. I'm all for it. Somebody needs help. Somebody else says, let's do something about it. Somebody else says, how can we raise the money? Somebody else says, let's run a bazaar. And then somebody always says we'll get Thornberry to build the boot. <laughs> oh, you mean the 
the CTA Bazaar, huh? Mrs. Pennypeather said she was calling you for that. Now, what's so terrible about building a booth, Donnie? Well, don't you remember the PTA Bazaar last year? I built the booth in my basement. I had to work late at night and keep my family up because I had to make changes. What changes? Well, Mrs. Flicker wanted it taller so she wouldn't bump her head. Mrs. Henderson is short, so she wanted the counter lower. Mrs. Cassidy wanted the booth broader because, well, you know Mrs. Cassidy. <laughs> And Mrs. Walker wanted the shelves deep because she had four dozen jars of pineapple guava jelly. I remember now. Yeah, I could hear the moaning way over here. When I was all through, the top was high enough for Mrs. Flicker, the counter was low enough for Mrs. Henderson, the booth was wide enough for Mrs. Cassidy's... Uh, for Mrs. Cassidy. <laughs> the shelves were deep enough for Mrs. Walker's four dozen jars of pineapple guava jelly, and I had to build the booth all over again because I couldn't get it out of my basement. <laughs> Frankly, Thorny, I'm a little disappointed at your attitude. I should think you'd feel honored they called on you to build the booth. They could have asked a lot of people to do it. Me, for instance. The year before last, I built them. Hammered in every nail myself. Even paid my own medical bills. Hey. Frankly, I feel a little hurt that they asked you instead of me. Well, Oz, I'd be very happy. No, no, no. The important thing is the job gets well done. You're the best man for it. I gladly step aside for you. Oh, I'm sure they'd love to have you help me, Oz. In fact, that's why I stopped. Oh, crying. thanks, just the same, Sonny, but I didn't spoil all your fun. You'd have to share the credit, and you know that wouldn't be right. But Oz, you have such great ideas. You're such a big help. Oh, I know, Sonny, but you deserve all the honors for yourself. No, really, Oz, you know I'm generous about things like that's that. That's just it. I'd be the last one to take advantage of your generosity. So you go right ahead and build them by yourself. Thanks, anyway. Thanks, Lou. Oh, uh, by the way, if you want to borrow the saw and hammer, they're hanging out in the garage. That's very generous of you, old pal. Oh, not at all. No more generous than you were in lending them to me in the first place, so... <laughs> Just right in, Barney. And just remember, it's all in the interest of civic duty. I'm glad I talked to you, Oz. Mrs. Pennyfeather asked me to make a bench for her to sit on, and you changed my mind. You aren't going to make it? Oh, yes, I'm going to make it. But now I won't leave the nails sticking out. <laughs> You know, Harriet, it does my heart good to see so many people fulfilling civic obligations, taking on public responsibilities, accepting duties. Uh, it must be the postman. Even the postman serves the public faithfully, always cheerful, always on time. Nothing to... keeps this courier from the swift completion of his appointed rounds. Uh, anything important, important, dear? No, just a couple things for me. Hey, here's an important-looking letter. Hmm? Dear citizen, you have been chosen to... Ozzy, this is a summons for jury duty. Well, that's very nice. Nice? What's nice about it? Well, Harriet, one of the great privileges of the democratic way of life is to be a cog in our judicial machinery. Ozzy. I should think you'd be very happy about it. Ozzy. Besides the civic responsibility, I think you'll find jury duty a very interesting experience. Ozzy. Yeah? I've got nothing to do with it. The summons is for you. Wait. <laughs> Can't do this to me. But your civic responsibility. I voted last year. I'm a busy man. They can't do a thing like that. Harriet, maybe if you write the jury commission a letter telling them how difficult it'd be for you to manage without me. Well, how difficult would it be, dear? <laughs> well, suppose there's a fire. I call the fire department. Well, suppose you hear a burglar. I'll call the police department. Suppose, suppose there's a, a, a hurricane carries away the house and everything in it. What would you do then? What would you do? <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> now yet there's never been a hurricane in this part of the country. See, I haven't even left yet, and you're starting to worry. Remember, dear? <laughs> Remember that little speech about civic responsibility? That's just it. Because I've got civic responsibility, I wanted to find somebody who will make a better juror than I am. Yes. Uh, uh, for one thing, I'm... I'm too impressionable. Well, now, what's that got to do with it? Suppose there's a woman defendant. She'll start to cry. And you know how I melt. <laughs> maybe she'll be pretty... Maybe she'll be devastatingly attractive. Sit up there on the stand, probably wearing a revealing dress. Maybe I'd better start early and get a good seat. <laughs> Ozzy, mm -hmm. wake up and answer the phone. Oh, no, no. Uh, hello? Hello, Mr. Nelson? Uh, yes? This is Mrs. Pennyfeather, president of the PTA. 
Oh, yes, Mrs. Pennyfeather. Yes. Well, Mr. Thornberry happened to mention how hurt you felt about being asked to work on the booze. And now, since we need more help, we can make everybody happy. Uh, yes, but Mrs. Penny... Now, uh, Penny... No, no. No, no arguments, please. We insist that you help. And you'll just have to forgive me for not asking you first. Oh, well, this is very kind of you, Mrs. Feather, Mrs. Pennyfeather. Yes. I, I'll, uh, in fact, I'll have to remember to thank Mr. Thornberry personally, but I'm afraid I won't be able to help. Well, I know, but as long as you try your best. No, no, I, I mean, I, I'm busy. I've had a higher call. I've been called for jury duty. Jury duty? Yes, I, I've got the summons right here in front of me. The uh, uh, first district court. Oh, isn't that a shame? Poor Mr. Nelson. Yeah. If it had come at any other time. Well, as the old saying goes, uh, uh, those are the breaks. <laughs> yes, 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 that's the idea. There'll always be another year. Oh, yeah. And another bazaar. Yeah. More food to make. Just yeah. remember that. It'll be on my mind continually. Uh, meanwhile, if there's anything else I could do, like uh, running the uh, bingo game yes. or the Little yes. Egypt concession, yes. or if you've got... Uh, yes, I'll let you know. Oh, well, thank you. And may I say again how sorry I am I can't build the booth? Well, it does seem a shame. That's work that does call for a strong back and a... Uh, yes. Well, goodbye, Mrs. <laughs> goodbye, Mrs. Featherweight. It's a... Uh, <laughs> You know, Harriet, this jury duty may have its good points after all. I'm not so sure about that. At least I won't have to knock myself out building booths for the PTA Bazaar. But, dear, you may have to serve for weeks on end. Oh, that reminds me. What? Uh, weeks on end. I'm going out to the garage and get my air cushion. <laughs> province of the trial jury to determine the truth of the alleged facts in a civil case and the guilt or innocence of the accused in a criminal case. Therefore, fellow jurors, I feel that... To, oh, uh, hello, Emmy Lou. Are you hiding from somebody? No, no, I, I'm just sitting here talking to... My, it's uh, re refreshing my mind on a few of the legal principles. I've been selected for jury duty. Oh, Mr. Nelson, how fascinating, how thrilling... Oh, I bet you'll be wonderful. Well, thank you, Emmy Lou. I'll do my best to be impartial and fair-minded. Jeepers, Mr. Nelson. I'll bet with your legal background and everything, they'll make you foreman of the jury. Mm, yes, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. And it's undoubtedly yes. a very important trial. Probably the most important trial this year. Yes, and this is leap year, too. It's... <laughs> It'll be something horribly exciting, like like gangsters or, or robbers. Why, it might even be a beautiful, mysterious woman on trial for her life. Yes. <laughs> and there you sit, Mr. Nelson, foreman of the jury, all eyes upon you. Well, not if the defendant is really beautiful. <laughs> Isn't exciting. The trial begins. For days it speeds along, dramatic, thrilling, intense. A woman's life is in the balance. She'll get a fair trial, too. I'll see Finally, the summing up. The jury retires. You order coffee and sandwiches and settle down to weigh the evidence. Hours go by. The tension mounts. It's getting unbearable. Records are keeping their phone lines open to the city guest. The judge is pacing in his antechamber. Suddenly the jury room door opens and guess what? The jury wants more sandwiches and coffee. <laughs> of deliberation. Then you finally file into the courtroom. Everything goes quiet. You can hear a pin drop. The beautiful woman is looking at you. The judge, the lawyers, the reporters, the spectators, they're all looking at you. I hope my tie is straight. That's... <laughs> there you stand. And now, solemnly, with a tear in your stern blue eye, you give the verdict. Not guilty. Not guilty. And the morning breaks loose. You're a hero, Thank a public you. figure, Thank with your picture in all the papers. <laughs> Hello, Mom. Oh, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> oh, you're the most wonderful man. Can I have your autograph? Certainly. Oh, just sign my notebook. Right here. To Emmy Lou, Ozzie Nelson, Foreman. There you are. Oh, thank you, Mr. Nelson. Thank you. And thanks for acquitting that poor, innocent, beautiful woman. It was only my duty, Emmy Lou. I'm glad I did it. Harriet, do you realize I've probably been called for jury duty for some big, important trial? 
Something like gangsters or something? Well, I certainly hope not. Well, why not? Well, I was reading just the other day where some gangsters took a jury member for a ride. It might be dangerous. Harriet, when it comes to a question of public duty, I'm not a man to be swayed by the imminence of danger. You think I mind their intimidation? You think I mind their threats? Do you, do you think you could come with me? <laughs> Pardon me, I was told to report to this court while they select the jury. Uh, your name? Uh, Nelson. Uh, Oswald G. Nelson of Rogers Road? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sit right down here, Mr. Nelson. We'll call you when we're ready for you. Yes. Did you bring your air cushion, dear? These seats are as hard as a rock. No, it had a hole in it. I took to the service station to be vulcanized. Silence in the court while prospective jurors are being questioned. I suppose this will be a big case. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Very interesting. Uh, what sort of case is it? Criminal? Gangsters? The Mercury Holding Company is in litigation with the Pennsylvania Bonding Corporation over the title deeds to certain bottom lands. <laughs> Will the prosecutor please question the prospective jurist? Uh, Herbert Barrington, up front, please. Herbert Barrington. Oh, kind of stuffy in here, don't you think so? is boring. Oh, quiet, dear. I'd like to complete this jury before the day is over. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I would, however, like to call the court's attention to the similarity between this case and the case of Snodgrass versus Continental Can. <laughs> Boy, these seats are sure hard. How long have we been here? About three hours. Oh, so stuffy in here, I can hardly keep my eyes open. Stanislaus Dobbig Mavian, up front, please. Stanislaus Dobbig Mavian. Stanislaus Dobbig. My name is Stanislaus Dobbig Mavian. Ozzy, you're falling asleep. My name is Ozzy, you're falling asleep. Ozzy, don't fall asleep. I haven't slept for days worrying about this case, Your Honor. I'm Harriet. I'm Harriet Nelson. <laughs> Your testimony, Miss Falling Asleep. Well, Your Honor, honey, it was like this. <laughs> I was just standing in front of the jewelry store waiting for my uncle. He was inside buying me a diamond bracelet. Uh, Your Honor, Judge Darbignavian, please. Yes, Mr. Nelson. Your Honor, I realize this is a bit irregular, but in the interest of gaining more knowledge of the true facts of the case... I wish to ask the witness a few questions. It is a bit irregular, Mr. Nelson, but as foreman of the jury, I think you're entitled to this special dispensation. And may I say that your request was very well put. Thank you, Your Honor. My knowledge of law and procedure is very slight. On the contrary, you have a very firm foundation in the basic tenets. The bar could do with men like you. Really, Your Honor, you flatter me. Not at all. I feel ability deserves recognition. Have it your way, Your Honor. <laughs> May I proceed with the questioning now? By all means. This should be very interesting in a legal sense. Uh, Miss Falling Asleep? Yes, Mr. Nelson. Foreman, honey. <laughs> uh, there are a few facts I'd like to uncover. You can count on me for anything. <laughs> Well, I, 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 thank you. You're very cooperative. Would you tell us, please, just where in front of the jewelry store were you standing? I wasn't standing. I was sitting on a fire hydrant. It's, uh, it was a cold day, as I remember. Didn't you find the hydrant a bit chilly to sit on? I was wearing my mink. Oh, yes, of course. Now, the chief witness for the prosecution testified he saw you run into the getaway car with the robbers. He said you were wearing a bright red dress. Only a woman who wants to attract attention would wear a red dress. I don't need to attract attention. Of course. Now, what color dress were you wearing? A skin-tight black silk jersey dress. <laughs> so, you say you were wearing a black dress... And the witness said you were wearing a red dress. That's right. Mr. Nelson, you're doing an excellent job. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
And now will the chief witness for the prosecution please take the stand? Okay, okay. Now, Mr. Thornberry, you say when you saw this young lady she was wearing a bright red dress. That's right, bright red. She looked terrific in it, too. No, no, never mind the physical details, Mr. Thornberry. Now, what is the color of this piece of cloth I'm holding up over my head? Green. Your Honor, I submit that the witness is colorblind. This piece of cloth is obviously red. Brilliant, Mr. Nelson, brilliant. Here, let me shake your hand. Thank you, Your Honor. Just call me Stan. Just call me Ozzy, wake up. You're snoring. The judge is furious. Uh, who do I... Oh, thank you, Stan. Uh, what's... Uh, the, uh, oh, uh, wake up. Come on, wake up. Uh, uh, Isn't that the jury you wanted excused? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, wake him up and get him out of here. Uh, what, what is it? What, what happened? Uh, what's that's happened? all, Mr. Nelson. I pulled some strings and got you excused. Excuse? Excuse from what? From jury duty. We, we won't need you. You can go now. Well, you can't do that to me. Get him out of here. What's that? Bailiff, throw that man out. I don't want to be excused. I came here to serve. Ozzie, come on. I'm a citizen. I'm a voter. I demand my chance. Ow. I know my rights. I've been through the freedom. Throw train. that man out. Of all the humiliating experiences, practically thrown out, Cast aside like an old shoe, an empty milk carton, an old Butterfinger wrapper. Well, it was nothing personal, dear. It was just that they had enough jurors without you. What's the use of being civic-minded? What does it get you? Man sacrifices his time for public duty, loses sleep, gets up at, gets up earlier than usual, shaves closer than usual, dresses carefully in a dignified, legalistic manner. Goes down to court and what happens? You caught up on the sleep you lost. <laughs> this goes to show you it doesn't pay to be intelligent. Doesn't pay to get an education. What good does it do you to go through school? You just get thrown off juries. Oh, I think. Just see if I ever go to another class reunion. The lawyer that threw me out. He excused you. His client was probably a crook and as guilty as they make him. He's afraid to have me on the jury. Ought to have that man disbarred. Those beady, shifting little eyes. <laughs> Who was he, anyway? He looked familiar. Mr. Pennyfeather. Pennyfeather? Mm-hmm. Fenimore Pennyfeather. His wife is president of the PTA. You've seen him at the meetings. Oh. Yes. Oh. Ozzie, look. Hmm? Well, there's a big pile of lumber in our driveway. And they're stormy. Yes. And somehow I don't like that big smile on his face. Hi, Oz. Boy, I sure fixed it for you, didn't I, Oz? Fixed what? Got you off jury duty. You got me off. Well, sure. And Mrs. Pennyfeather told me you were on jury duty in the same court with her husband. I suggested he have you excused. It was all very legal and simple. Was that nice of me? Barney, you dog, you just did this so I'd be available to help you build those boots. Oz, how can you be so ungrateful after I've made this tremendous sacrifice? What's this? Knowing how deeply you feel about civic responsibility, I finally talked Mrs. Pennyfeather into letting you build the boots alone. Well, what about you, you big loafer? Well, you see, old man, in order to get you off jury call, I had to agree to take your place. Why, Thorny? Oz, please! Thorny. You can kill a man with a hammer! Thorny. You've been listening to the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Thank you.